Hello, this is Yaakov Kronenberg from Jerusalem, and tonight we'll be talking about... Tonight we'll be doing another class in our series of classes on uh, Scorpio Ascendant and Mars and the, diff- the ruling planet in different signs. Tonight we'll be doing Mars and its exaltation sign of Capricorn. Now it's interesting, um, again, everything has pluses and minuses. Last week we talked about... The last two weeks, actually, we've been talking about uh, Mars and its fall and its detriment, and we saw they also have some good sides to it. Mars and exaltation has um, has also some uh, minuses to it, and it has some pluses, and let's talk about it. First of all, always when when person has a ruling planet in exaltation, you have to worry that they get a little bit... Uh, they think too much of themselves sometimes. They, 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 right? that, that because they, they feel exalted. They feel like they're, sometimes they can feel like they're better than other people. Sometimes um, they feel like they have a special mission in life. Sometimes they feel they're very special in a general way. Uh, all sorts of things like this. So they can become unrealistic. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Is the word if you always have a if you have a ruling planet in exaltation, the person can become somewhat uh, has a tendency to become unrealistic. I remember my teacher. He once told me that you know he liked his chart because no planets were exalted and no planets were in uh, and no planets were in fall or detriment. And so he said he was, what do you call it, down to earth. He, he, like, he, he, he understood things objectively. And that's, that's, that's how he looked at it. But in any case, um, if, you ha- if you have a planet, uh, ruling, especially the ruling planet exalted, there's going to be a tendency towards uh, somehow unrealism. It's like an unrealistic approach to life. Eben Ezra, Eben Ezra has a book of aphorisms on astrology, and one of them is a planet, a, a planet in exaltation is like a person who sits on the chair of the king and thinks he's the king. Right? And it's, uh, the idea of being unrealistic, being out of touch somehow, think you're, you know, you're much better than you really are. So a person I know who has a ruling planet in exaltation is always going to have to worry about that. Now, Mars being exalted in Capricorn, you have to understand that Mars is a malefic by nature. Um, and Capricorn is a sign ruled by the other malefic. So even though it's exalted, it's, it's, it's like there's two, two uh, malefics working together. Uh, so it could have some negative energy. On the one hand, it's very good. Why is it exalted? Well, maybe we should deal with, first of all, why is, why is Mars and Capricorn exalted to begin with? Because Mars has a great amount of energy and, um, and, uh, pers- and, uh, fighting, and fighting spirit and things like that. And Saturn, when, it, when it's in Capricorn, it gives it perseverance. It gives it um, stick to it, uh, stick to it, stick to it didness. It makes the uh, so it, it combines the Martian energy with the Saturn um, perseverance and um, indomitability and 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 things like that. So it gives a person a tremendous a person who has this a tremendous amount of energy and ambition and uh, initiative. Right, especially if it's high in the chart, uh, which we to say in, in Scorpio, Mars is going to be lower, and the Mars will fall in the third house, which is Mars in Capricorn, which is um, one of the weaker houses. But still, it's going to be strong there, uh, Mars, because it's exalted. Uh, but but the energy in there is the Martian energy is going to work towards third house affairs, uh, writing, uh, literary ambitions, uh, short journeys, uh, connection with the siblings and the neighbors and the, the community, things like that. The person is going to be uh, involved in. He's going to use the Martian energy towards those affairs.
Um, so it's an, it's an interesting combination. I like Mars and, and Capricorn because it gives a great intellectual ability too because it's falling, it's Mars exalted and, uh, and it's in the third house, the third house of education. So a person's got this Mars exalted in the third house, they're going to get a good education. Right? And that leads me up to whose chart we're going to do tonight. There's a man by the name of Mr. Goethe. Johannes Wolfgang von Goethe, one of the most famous uh, German writers and poets and playwrights of all time. And he was a very important literary figure in his day and age. And talking about the third house, so he's got Scorpio rising with Mars in the third. And if you see, see, the uh, first thing about him that I, and I saw right away is that his father... His father felt his father was a lawyer, but his father felt like he didn't have the advantages in his early life uh, to, to to learn and things like that. So he gave it all to his son. He invested a tremendous amount of energy uh, in his son. He taught his uh, he had a, he had he taught his son, and he had private tutors for his son, and so he became. Um, he excelled in languages. He learned uh, Latin and Greek and even Hebrew and and some other more modern languages. And he had tutors in science and uh, basically tutors in everything. He learned dancing, uh, all uh, all sorts of things. His father had him, you know, taught him everything when he was young. So that's an example of the, the uh, Mars. Ex- exalted in the third house in his chart and if you look at his chart he's got uh, Saturn on the uh, ascendant and well he's got Saturn on the ascendant and uh, very very tightly on the ascendant so it gave him a serious air and when you have Saturn on the ascendant it means the Mars being in Capricorn sign is going to go to the ascendant so it's like he has Mars and Saturn on the ascendant and so the Mars is going to have a very, very powerful influence on the man. And also Mars, Saturn are in mutual reception, right? Mars is in Saturn sign and Saturn is in Mars sign and they're a sextile away from each other. So it gave him a great ambition. Gave him a tremendous amount of ambition and um, courage and... Uh, and he became a very, very, he was a very hard worker, a very, uh, a person very dedicated to his, um, to his art. And he, I imagine he spent a lot, a lot of time, um, working on his literary career. He was actually a lawyer and then he became, uh, he slowly moved into literature and left, and left the field of law. Right, because you see, his, his, actually, if you look at his tenth house cusp, he's got Mercury on the tenth house cusp, and Mercury is in the ninth house, so that connects the career with law. Right, the ruler of the ten and the ninth is always an indication of uh, either a career in law, religion, philosophy, higher education, all sorts of things like that. And here it's said it works out more of towards the law, because he's got Saturn on the ascendant. Do, which is indicative of law. Uh, and you see a very powerful fifth house. He was involved in a lot of romances, and he had a pretty good marriage with a lot of children, right? Because he got the two best planets. He's got Jupiter there, and he's got the moon uh, conjunct Jupiter, so he must have had a good wife, a wife who was very devoted to him. And had a good nature, good natured wife, which is an important thing if you can have a wife that has a good nature and is helpful. And uh, it seems like he had that. And so I thank everybody for listening and hope they enjoyed the class.